It is safe to say that Paul was the most significant early convert to Christianity. One who moved from being the greatest persecutor of the faith to being its greatest apostle. Hands down, I'll give that to Paul. Paul is also the hero of the book of Acts because Paul, more than anyone, was responsible for the spread of Christianity um, from its small beginnings in Jerusalem out to the wider Roman world. Most historians would agree with Luke that apart from Yesu, apart from Yeshua, Paul was the most important figure in the history of early Christianity. While the disciples, if they authored the Gospels, but while the authors of the um, four Gospels, both the Synoptics and John, while they were writing um, in the 65 CEs to the 95 CEs, Paul was actually writing in the 50 CEs. You know, you have like 10, um, 10 to 20 or even less um, years after the death of Yesu. Okay. And these are the letters, 13 letters that are ascribed to Paul, his epistles. We'll come and look at these letters carefully. These are the letters that happen to survive in the New Testament. Um, they are the only ones that we have, um, the only works of Paul that survive um, in the New Testament. A careful study of Paul's letters has to be done with an eye to the book of Acts for corroboration. Yeah. When you're studying um, Paul's letters, you want to keep an eye on the book of Acts because they narrate the same things. Yeah. When this is done, it reveals several important pieces of biographical information on Paul. Yeah. So you want to study the book of Acts, what the author, which we believe was Luke, what the author is saying in the book of Acts. He says a lot of things about Paul. Now, when you take Paul's letters and you read what Paul says about himself, you want to check it with what Luke, who is argued to be a companion of Paul, um, wrote in his book of Acts. Paul has 13 letters ascribed to him. This is very important. This is where I want to hang my hat. Paul has 13 letters ascribed to him. These letters are divided into two. Those from one to seven that I've listed were written by Paul. From, verse, from number nine to number 13, scholars argue that it was not written by Paul. The first seven, they are called the undisputed Pauline or Pauline letters. The bunch that scholars argue that were not written by Paul, they call them the Deuteropauline or Deuteropauline letters. They are called Deutero because they are secondary and standard. Why do they say that the first seven was written by Paul? The reason is because they cohere well together, stylistically and then theologically. And these seven that I've listed first, they claim to be written by Paul. What scholars even argue the most about? So we can live with the Dero Pauline epistles. We have an argument there. But um, the argument that is made that most scholars um, will not even debate on is the pastoral epistles, which was actually written by one person. First 
Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. Each letter, which is Timothy and Titus, 1st, 2nd, each letter is written to a pastor of a large Christian community. Timothy, who was the head of the church of Ephesus, and then Titus, who was the um, head of the church of the Isle of Crete. Each letter deals with slightly different situations, but the major issues are the same. False teachers have begun to create problems for the congregations. The communities are suffering from internal problems of disorganization. Probably the biggest problem with accepting the pastorals as having um, um, not come from Paul involves the historical situation that they seem to presuppose. The writer is dealing with something that Paul doesn't deal with. That was foreign to Paul. The, the, the writer of First Timothy, Second Timothy and Titus was living in an era and facing some difficulties that Paul never had to face. And what happened was somebody wrote this epistles and then put Paul's name on it. We know this should not be a shock to us because we know that Christians in antiquity wrote documents in the names of the apostles. The question is not whether Christians in antiquity, if I can use the word forged in parentheses, document in the names of the apostles. No, we know that they did. We have um, writings, apocalypse, allegedly written in the names of Peter and Paul. We have gospels allegedly written by Thomas, Peter, Bartholomew, and even Mary Magdalene. We have letters that were forged in the names of various Christians. Even Yeshua himself, they are things that were written and his name was put on it. So it's not a question that where there was this being done. We know, we have evidence that this was being done. That is why we, we, we own it upon ourselves to really study the history of what came to be what we call the New Testament and how it came about. So this was what was the situation on the ground. Why would scholars, why would anybody challenge First Timothy, Second Timothy and Titus? Scholars give a bunch of reasons. One, the vocabulary of the letters speak against their authenticity. That is, their the vocabulary is strikingly non-Pauline or non-Pauline. Number two, differences in the historic situation presupposed by these letters compared to Paul's historical context and the way he responded to it. There's also um, a markers that um, people stand on or um, to challenge these three pastoral epistles. Okay. And also, the different situation appears to be reflected in the pastoral's, pastoral's attitude towards women. We'll look at that also. So these three things um, kind of makes us question and say, wait a minute, did Paul really write this? Or um, is this something that somebody wrote later because of challenges that the church was facing after Paul?